the 2021 MacBook Pro. Apple has redesigned the MacBook Pro this year. There's a lot to be excited about, but that doesn't mean it's all been positives. I've been using it for a while now, and I want to run through some of this year's changes while also sharing some of my thoughts. So in both the 14 and 16 inch models, you get the same documentation and the same USB-C to MagSafe charging cables. The main differences are in the power adapters and the MacBooks themselves. With all 14 inch models that have an eight core M1 Pro CPU, you get a 67 watt adapter by default, but you can pay a little bit extra to upgrade to the 97 watt adapter. The 97 watt adapter will come included with all other 14 inch models. Keep in mind, if you get the eight core M1 Pro model, you won't be able to fast charge with the 67 watt adapter that comes included in the box. All 16 inch models come with a 140 watt power adapter that will be compatible with fast charge. Okay, I wanna take a moment to talk about the documents. Let's be honest, not a lot of people are gonna read these documents, but the black Apple stickers are a bit interesting. Recently, Apple has been reserving their black stickers for their more higher end pro orientated devices. This year, they've included them here, I'm probably still not going to use them, but it's good to know that Apple is signaling that this machine is a serious device. Okay, let's talk about the external design. This year, Apple has introduced a new design for the MacBook Pro range. For a while, I feel like Apple really focused on getting their MacBooks to be as thin as possible. Unfortunately, this kind of meant they sacrificed a lot of its functionality. At times, they've definitely had a questionable port selection, and the butterfly keyboard they introduced had a thinner mechanism, but was notorious for breaking down. We'll talk more about those two things a bit later, but I think the new design really shows a shift in Apple's priorities, and I think it's for the better. Straight off the bat, I have to say, I really like the new design. It still keeps the distinct MacBook styling, but it's a bit thicker. The sharp edges have now been rounded off, and they've flattened out the lid. The MacBook is definitely a bit chunkier this year, and I actually think it feels a lot sturdier. It feels really good in the hands, and I think the extra internal volume should help with thermal performance. All right, other than that, there are a couple of other minor changes. This year, the feet underneath the MacBook are thicker and grippier, and the extra height should help with airflow to the vents underneath the MacBook. They've also moved the MacBook Pro logo from the bottom of the screen and etched it underneath the MacBook. Now, ports. We're seeing the return of some ports this year, and it's definitely a welcome change from Apple. On the right, there's a full-size HDMI port, a Thunderbolt 4 port, and an SD card slot. It's fantastic to see the return of the SD card slot and HDMI port, and it really brings back some much needed utility for the MacBooks. The SD card slot will come in handy for anyone who uses a camera on a regular basis. Likewise, HDMI is still one of the most widely used methods for connecting to a monitor, TV, or projector. And now you'll be able to plug full-size HDMI cables straight into your MacBook. Important to note though, the HDMI port only supports HDMI 2.0, not the most up-to-date HDMI 2.1 and the SD card slot only supports up to UHS 2. These are not deal breakers. It's better than carrying dongles, and these ports are fine for most use cases. With HDMI 2.0, you're still able to get 4K at a 60Hz refresh rate. Still, when you're paying this much for a laptop, it would have been nice to have the most up-to-date technology. All right, moving on to the other side. We have a headphone jack compatible with high impedance headphones, two additional Thunderbolt 4 ports, and of course, the reintroduction of Apple's MagSafe charging port. MagSafe's great. It's satisfying to attach and supports fast charge, which will let you charge 50% of the battery's capacity in 30 minutes. The only downside is that you can't charge on either side of the MacBook like you can with USB-C. Also interesting to note, Apple's website lists the 14-inch MacBook Pro as being able to fast charge with a USB-C cable through the Thunderbolt 4 ports, but the 16-inch MacBook will only be able to fast charge with a MagSafe 3 cable. All right, before we talk about the display, we have to address the elephant in the room, and probably one of Apple's most controversial design choices in a while, the notch. It houses a new 1080p webcam, an improvement on last generation 720p, but unlike the iPhone's notch, it doesn't have Face ID. For the most part, the operating system treats the notch as if it weren't there. Your cursor moves right through it, and if you take a screenshot, it doesn't show the notch there at all. Having used the MacBook Pro for a little while now, I've still found it a little annoying especially when my menu bar has been a lighter color. You won't really notice it when you're deep in your workflow, 
But every so often, I do run into an app that doesn't work so nicely with it, and it really becomes quite noticeable when this happens. Now, there are third-party apps out there that can turn your entire menu bar black. They do a pretty good job at hiding the notch, especially because of the display's deep blacks. But overall, I wouldn't say the notch has been the most elegant design choice. So, recently, a lot of my meetings have been shifted online, and I'm sure that's been the same for a lot of other people. Having a 1080p webcam has been good, but for me, it was never really that crucial to have a high-resolution webcam during a meeting. If the trade-off for a 1080p webcam was to have a notch, I would have been happy to stick with a 720p camera. Alright, notch aside though, the display looks incredible. Apple has had a long-running reputation of having some of the best-looking displays on the market, and this year is no exception. The display is bright, and the colors really pop. It's a 10-bit mini-LED display, and it can deliver 1,000 nits of sustained brightness, with a peak of 1,600 nits. In everyday use, the display has been fantastic. It's so sharp, and the vibrant colors make watching movies and TV shows on this thing amazing. For the first time in a MacBook, Apple has also introduced ProMotion. This means the display can ramp its refresh rate up to 120Hz for a smoother experience when needed, or drop down to 24Hz which will help conserve battery life. It should make movement on the screen, like scrolling or dragging windows around, feel a lot smoother. For me though, I haven't really noticed it as much as I do on other devices, like a phone or a tablet. I think there's just a lot more scrolling involved in the UI. That being said, if you're playing games, you'll definitely notice it. And overall, ProMotion will still help extend battery life. Okay, moving on to the keyboard. There's been a couple changes with the keyboard this year, starting with how it looks. It now sits in a black well, which I think gives the MacBook a new sleeker look. Some might say it's a bit harder to distinguish between the keys, but I haven't run into that issue at all. Alright, it looks good, but how does it feel? This year, Apple has stuck with the scissor switch mechanism. There's a decent amount of key travel and a nice tactile feel. Although to me, the keyboard feels slightly mushier compared to the 16-inch MacBook Pro from last generation. I don't like that as much, but that's just a personal preference, and it's still a great keyboard overall. Apple have also decided to replace the touch bar this year, with a row of full-size function keys. Honestly, there were a few handy things I would use the touch bar for. For example, I use OneNote quite a bit, and the pen tool and font color options are on different tabs, so it was quite nifty being able to use the touch bar to change font colors, without having to constantly change tabs. I'm going to miss the touch bar, and in an ideal world, I would have loved to see the touch bar and the physical function keys. But if I had to pick one, I guess physical keys is probably more practical. Alright, let me touch on the trackpad real quick. MacBooks have always been a leader in this area, and I think Apple delivers once again. The trackpad is massive, especially on the 16-inch MacBook Pro, and using it is smooth and accurate. Long-standing MacBook users are probably already familiar with this, but I think one of the more overlooked features of a MacBook is the haptic touch. It lets you click anywhere on the trackpad without having to worry about your click registering. All in all, the trackpads are more of the same this year, but that's actually a good thing, because trackpads on MacBooks have always been awesome to use. Now, I've primarily been using the base model 16-inch MacBook, and so far I haven't run into any performance issues. This video was shot in 4K and edited on this MacBook. Scrubbing through footage has been very smooth, and rendering times have been quick. But the best thing is, it does all this while staying so quiet. You're hardly getting any fan noise at all. Battery life has also been crazy. Battery life would depend on your usage, but I've spent full days video editing without having to recharge at all. That being said, I am a little worried about using the base model, because I don't know how well 16 gigs of memory will hold up in the long run. If you're someone looking to future-proof your device, you might want to look into upgrading your memory. Alright, so one major issue that I had with the previous generation MacBook was with its temperature while using an external monitor. When I plugged it into an external monitor, the dedicated GPU would run way too hot, causing the fans to spin up too loud as well. It was not a pleasant experience. I'm happy to say though, that with this MacBook, I've had no issues. I'm happily running two 4K monitors, and the MacBook is quite comfortable to use. It does get warm, but it's not hot, which is perfectly fine. In terms of form factor, I'm honestly torn. I've always loved bigger laptops, because the extra screen real estate is so useful. But every time I pick up the 14-inch model, I'm very tempted to switch over. You're getting the same performance, and it just feels so light and portable. It's handy, even when you're moving from your desk to your couch. For now, I'm going to stick with the 16-inch, but that actually might change in the future. Overall, I've really enjoyed using the MacBook Pro so far. It delivers amazing performance, especially for this form factor. The redesign looks good and should offer better thermal performance, while the return of the old ports really means this is a much more versatile device this year. 
I still wish the notch wasn't there, but for what the MacBook offers, it's a small sacrifice to make. Hey guys, if you like this video, please consider dropping a like and subscribing. I'm hoping to make a lot more videos in the future, so please stay tuned for more.